everyone and welcome back to a brand new day of Road to Teacher World 2019. We are now moving on to a sort of anti-meta deck which is Ombrian Hoopa with Spiritum. Now huge props to um, Shintaro Ito for creating another hugely popular and really really good counter meta deck which he has been doing all throughout this season it feels between the Meganium deck, the Valplum deck and now this. This feels like an incredibly top, um, an incredibly easy pick if you want to just have an easy time with some matches and have a really hard time with others. Um, obviously the deck can be a bit linear. We do have Hoopa with this control card attack which does give it protection from um, all effects of attacks including damage done to this Pokemon by Pokemon GX or Pokemon EX so a pretty powerful um, ability right there. And we do have Super Cybolt, which deals 80 damage. Now we do have the means to power up Hoopa, and even though it deals very little damage for a non GX, it's actually a decent number to be hitting. And for all the non GXs that we have to deal with, Ombrian is here. Ombrian has the Retaliate attack, which deals 30 damage plus 90 more if any of your Pokemon are knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack during the last turn. So up to 120 damage which is enough to KO a lot of the non-GX attackers that are seeing play right now and with the Vard field you actually get to 130 damage which is enough to KO things like Coco Prism which could give this deck a little bit of trouble. Um, 120 damage is also enough to KO Zapdos which is the main, the other big uh, non-GX attacker that is making the rounds. Dark Cutter does as all well it's 60 though probably not going to be used too too often and we also have Spiritomb, the new Spiritomb with 60 HP and its ability Building Spite. Once during your turn before you attack you may put one damage counter on this Pokemon and Anguish Cry does 10 damage plus 30 more damage for each damage counter on this Pokemon. So another way to deal with non-GX is another decent, very decent attacker in the sense that um, it can deal up to 160 damage with five damage counters on it, not more than that, but because of the Vard field, we can deal 170, which coincidentally is enough to KO Lele. Now, supporters wise, we have four Lily, four Cynthia, four Guzma, two Erigas, and two Judge, along with four Poke Gear, so the consistency of this deck is off the charts. We also have four Nespol to search for the basic Pokemon, and we do that. since we do have Energy Evolution Eevee, um, that should be enough because we can immediately evolve with our attachment, although um, one way Zork can deal with this deck is through a low line mock, of course. But with Umbrian, um, we do have the Ultra Balls to search for it manually in case we can't evolve. We can knock it out and then eventually run them out of their mock, and they can't do anything to the Hoopa. Um, 3 Devour Field to increase our damage output, 1 Black Market in order to prevent our opponent from taking prizes. It's super important to not play the stadium until the very last minute. Um, and hopefully combined with a judge in order to prevent your opponent from actually taking any prize cards whatsoever and having to play to more than six. Um, one stretcher to help with recovering Pokemon, nine basic energy, four DCs and two counter catcher because we should be falling behind in some matchups and it will allow us to pick off the right Pokemon at the right time in order to deny our opponent and hopefully win a lot of games through Hoopa. So let's jump into the ladder, see what we can do with this deck hopefully face off against um hopefully face off against pigrams and reshi's arts which are the main deck that this deck tries to counter um shouldn't some version of garber be good with all the item cards being played now i mean garber is always going to be good but for example reshi's art you need 13 14 item cards in their discard pile for you to one shot at reshi's art 14 item cards is a lot. So the HPs are getting so, so high that that's why Garbodor might not be as good as you would want it to be. Now, speaking of consistency off the charts, um, we don't get a Drossel Border or a Poke Gear. Um, in our starting hand, we are going to get at least one Mulligan, hopefully more. Can KO the 10 AGX too. Yeah, that's right. Spiritum can KO the 10 AGX. Um, JMAT. You'll play Reshizard. I already played with Reshizard. Yeah, I actually already played with Reshizard. And our one, um, our one top deck is actually going to be Pokegear. Now, clearly, either we're up against Pigram or we're up against Zapdos deck. Um, Pigram would be 
a decent deck to go up against. Zapdos is probably a bad matchup, and the deck that this deck ended up losing to in top eight of the Japanese tournament for Shintaro Rito plays top eight. So we'll see. Um, uh, can I might give a Garbodor based deck a try at some point? Just probably, well, definitely not today, I don't think. Um, and I'm not sure what the best partner for Garbodor would be, honestly. Um, so we do see the Shrine getting discarded. Uh, we're gonna get let loose to Oblivion. Why do people love doing that on turn one? It's like if it doesn't, if that's is that your plan to beating someone? Just having them death draw, and it's gonna work. <laughs> it's actually going to work. Huh? Switching out of the Jirachi. Switching out of the Jirachi. I'll definitely establish an EV, right? And I think I'm definitely gonna establish a Spiritum. I'm really surprised by my opponent retreating into the Zapdos. And I honestly think I'm just gonna keep my energies for now. I, I don't know what my opponent will try to do next turn. Probably gonna just take a knockout. And therefore I will evolve into Umbrian and be able to take a knockout myself. We do the Evolkner. Definitely grabbing a switching card, I'd imagine. That switch into Sabdos was honestly really weird. Yeah. The escape rope, you can have my other Eevee, of course. There's the Sabdos. If Umbrian had 120 HP, it would be amazing. It, honestly, it unfortunately only has 110. So we won't be able to do that. Okay, we get a judge, so definitely not the supporter we would want to find, but not the worst one either. Now, is it worth it to use a counter catcher to KO one of the Jirachis, or do we just eliminate the attacking threat? I think eliminating the Zapdos actually makes a little bit more sense. Um, rescue stretching back the Eevee also makes sense. And once again, our hand is just not great at all here. Herbut, thank you so much. Two month streak. Thank you so, so much. No need to bench the Hoopa, right? No need to bench the Hoopa, but at least as long as the Spirit Dome keeps accum accumulating damage counters, that is a very nice price card. This is going to be a war of attrition between taking prizes each and every turn, right? For both of us. So we do have access to Triple Umbrian and two Spirit Tombs. Unfortunately, I have to rescue Stretcher away. Um, or I had to use my Rescue Stretcher to establish a threat for this turn. So I won't be able to have a sixth Umbrian. Uh, but that's okay, I guess. Um, we're gonna see the skateboard. Ooh, switch into Jirachi. So maybe my opponent will not get a KO here. That would actually be pretty good for us. Well, there's the Electro Power, so there's the Volkner for the switch. Plus the Electro Power, that is going to be a KO. Um, I wouldn't mind finding a counter catcher this turn, however. Um, purely because that way my Umbrian will be able to kill the puzzle. We avoid Sledgehammer shenanigans. Um, so yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, Grave, muchas gracias por las felicitaciones. Um, okay, I think, I mean, I'm definitely evolving here, right? Definitely, definitely evolving. And then I only have one counter catcher in my deck. So that's not great news. Probably won't be able to find it. I do believe Erigas gives me the best chance at finding it, however. Now I'm dealing 100 damage, so next turn I'll be able to KO a Zapdos. I'm gonna go ahead and Erigas. And, ooh, I do find the black market, so that could be a way in which I start, um, or I'm able to, rather, uh, turn around the price trade-off, although I only, I literally only have five attackers, so that's the biggest issue. And I'm, at, like, at the rate I'm losing Pokemon, uh, I'm not sure. He already discarded a stadium, right? I feel like I'm gonna hold off on, well, it's just he has the old Jirachi. Ah, I kinda wanna hold off on the black market for now. I'm just gonna go ahead and retaliate. I'm gonna wait one turn, yeah, just the one turn. Find another Hoopa, not very useful. 
Alright, definitely not very useful. And Doc Reed, thank you so much for watching. <laughs> I really do appreciate it. And thank you for the kind words. Hello, HPK Tank. Thank you so much for being here as well. Thank you so, so much for being here as well. Okay, so we're gonna see the Stellar Wish. Black Market plus Judge would be the ideal. There's a knockout. Uh, so let's deal. <laughs> it's gonna be an annoying Pokemon to deal with because that's the one Pokemon I can't really KO other than with Spiritum, right? I actually can KO with Spiritum. So I think I should use Spiritum here to KO this guy. No, I need to save this one to KO the Celestila. So I'm gonna promote the AV. A bunch of cards in my opponent's hand. Definitely gonna evolve. That's my third Umbrian back to back. Um, I mean, I think now is when I play the black market. Well, actually, no, it isn't because I actually want my opponent to um, take a prize to get out of the Celestila turn, right? So I should bench a Hoopa. I think I'll bench both just to thin. Yeah, if my opponent wants to Guzma stall me, then so be it. Okay, so I'm gonna bait the counter stadium, right? That would be the second one. And I'll go ahead and retaliate. I have triple poke gear to make sure that I get the right watcher for next turn. I will also be getting a price card. There's the counter catcher that I needed the previous turn, not this one, but the previous turn. So yeah, we're gonna see the field blower. Okay, um, that is a way of counter stadium that would not have worked with black market. So we'll have to see. I mean, at least the counter catcher means I don't have to play into the Celestila, right? I don't have to attack into the Celestila. Although maybe, yeah, attacking into the Celestila is terrible, right? It's actually terrible. Um, there's a Celestila. I think, I mean, it depends on which supporter I find, right? But I could, I think I definitely go after the Zapdos, right? Because then if I'm able to judge my opponent, he needs to find Zapdos plus energy to actually get a KO. Okay, so definitely promoting this guy. This guy can deal with Celesteela, but it's also the only one that can get a KO. So I'll start by building Spite, right? Now I'm at 100 damage. This deals 160. And then I'll go ahead and to this grab the lily please let me find the judge that is not a judge maybe i go after the jirachi then there's a judge okay so i think judge plus chaos aptos is the right move here plus play black market i think that makes a lot of sense counter catcher and then attach and then judge Okay, it took me three Poké Gears, but we got there. And now we have um, a really good follow-up. Is this a turn where we will be able to turn things around? Obviously the Hoopa not affecting here at all. Um, Buzzle for a Mosa would actually be a way that my opponent just beats me, right? <laughs> Buzzle for a Mosa would be a way that my opponent just wins here by using the GX attack. That would not be great. Well, he would need Buzz for a Mosa and the Stadium. Right? Because the stadium does give me that protection. So we'll see. Finally, my opponent slows down a little bit, does find the Volkner, so that will give him the attacker that he needs. The question is, will he find a stadium? Will he find a counter stadium for my black market? That's the question here, the real question. And who third is, thank you so much, seven months of subscription. Thank you so, so much. Oh no, the escape rope. Okay. The escape rope is definitely annoying. So I'm gonna have to promote the Hoopa, right? To force my opponent to have double stretcher. Oh, that's another escape rope, right? Uh, yeah, that's another escape rope. Okay. Did we make my opponent whiff? Gets the stretcher. Oh, 
plays the escape rope. I mean, if you have double electro power, you have double electro power. Otherwise, this is a turn where things turn around for me. Promotes the Celestila and passes. That is a beautiful, beautiful thing to see. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and poke it here first. Yeah, I find the Guzma perfect, right? And we have been, so we have successfully, successfully turned around this game. I was not feeling like we were going to be able to do this, and there's a victory. Whew. That was super, super, super intense. Um, GG to my opponent. We were definitely on the back foot there, especially with that turn one let loose, where we were able to only draw two nest balls, but we played it out, we played it out pretty nicely, and that Kuzma just made a huge difference. If I had not drawn that Kuzma, yeah, all I needed to do was take a prize that turn. Right, so if the Pokegear had not given me a Kuzma, I would have grabbed whatever it gave me, then I would have benched the Hoopa that I drew, then I would have airy cast for five, I believe. And I need a DC to be able to retreat that Hoopa. Right, if that happened, if I got the DC, um, I would have taken a knockout on the Celestila and it would have been fine, right? So we were definitely in a good spot no matter what. Uh, it came down to finding the right card and the Pokegear got us the Guzma that we needed. So I would like to go first. We get a heart and a hello, very kind. We are going to be Charizard Leaves and Lightning Deck Box. So our opponent playing the Confusion game here. <laughs> is he a Regizard? Is he a Pigram? Is he both? Obviously not both. Um, okay, so we mulligan twice. I think that because we're going first, definitely starting Koopa makes a lot of sense. Um, this hand is also pretty solid. Um, if one of the energies was a DC, then it would be perfect. Literally perfect. Okay, so we are up against Pigram, right? Definitely gonna attach energy to the Hoopa, and we're definitely gonna Lily for four. Benching another Hoopa makes sense to me, and Guilanucci, likewise. <laughs> Thank you so much for the game, and good luck to you, sir. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. We shall see how it goes. So my opponent is pretty sad at this point for some reason I'm very sad that I don't have a DC actually we see an energy to Zerora, we see an Acrobike the Acrobike does indicate Turbo Pikram, right? which does mean that other than Coco Prism and maybe one Zapdos, my opponent probably won't be able to deal with the Hoopa Onslaught here we do see the Electromagnetic Radar being played You see the electromagnetic crater being played, discarding Lele and a lightning. Hopefully my opponent realizes that Coco Prism Star is his best way at dealing with this, of course. And Galade, all good, how about you? I'm loving Unbroken Bonds as well. Definitely, definitely enjoying it. Okay. So there's the Pikram getting benched. There is one Electro Bower getting burnt. There's Coco GX being played as well. Is that for a Lily? That is to maximize the Lily. Um, energy Switch, Zapdos, and another Electro Bower would be pretty sad for us. But our opponent actually passes. Does Secret Good get through Koopa? No, it does not. No, it does not. Okay, so I don't think I want to evolve actually. Oh no, never mind, I do. I do want to evolve. I definitely don't fancy my chances of finding a DC off of this Cynthia. And my opponent has shown zero indication that he's playing any um, non GXs so far. So I'm gonna go ahead and Cynthia, spread my energy around, not fully commit to anything, and then Nest Ball for an Eevee. 
I would believe a spiritum would be a good call here, right? In order to start um, building spite, you know, to start building spite and hopefully get some damage counters in that way. And then, yep, yeah, solid hand. We're off to a slower start. We don't get that turn to attack, but that is okay. That is a okay. We see the lighting energy getting attached to the Coco GX. The Acrobite this card was another Acrobite. No, was a choice man, sorry. People using Guardi Sylvian like a one off. That's to counter um Valplum though. You should play Weezing Coco Spread. It's straight decimate Charizard and Figaro on my Berserk. Well, I already uploaded a deck to my YouTube channel for Weezing Coco, and I believe I did indeed beat one of those two decks. I'm not so sure it decimates Charizard, but it definitely gives Figaro a run for its money. Okay, so we see the retreat. Still no Coco Prism Star, still no Sapdos. So it doesn't seem like my opponent has much of an answer to. Us. I'll definitely go for the building spite. Now I would like to find a TCE, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and Cynthia. Maybe I could have burnt the Poke here. I do find a TCE, thankfully. And we'll start using Super Cybolt. We will start using Super Cybolt. Turn 3 pressure, that's completely fine. Because we already have a Hoopa with one more energy attached as well. It can't go through. Secret Hood does not go through Hoopa because Secret Hood says, or Stealthy Hood says, this Pokemon is not affected by your opponent's abilities, but Hoopa affect, Hoopa's ability affects Hoopa, not your Pokemon. Ooh, there we go. We are going to see the a Thunder Mountain play into KOing the Hoopa. So now we need our own stadium. Right, now we need our own stadium here. And that is not a stadium. Weird translation. No, it's not. Iversary gets pretty clear. I think it's actually pretty clear. Delphi Hood says it affects. Um. It affects, like it stops abilities from your opponent's Pokemon affecting your Pokemon. Hoopa's ability says it protects Hoopa. It doesn't say your opponent's Pokemon GX are now affected by this and therefore they can't damage Hoopa. It says Hoopa, Hoopa's ability affects Hoopa. Yeah. Um, okay, I definitely don't think I'm gonna be needing this. So I fancy my chances of finding the one Divard field Hop off a Lily for three, then a Judge for four. I also don't want to help my opponent. And then if I took it KO Coco, that's completely fine. I'm really not bothered by that because my opponent is not going to have any other attacker here, really. Um, and if he does switch out, like I have both Spiritum and, and Umbrian for one energy attackers to deal with the Coco. Yeah, I reserved. Honestly, the professor test is so easy that I'm not sure. Um, like, it comes down to official rulings and the interpretation. And if you read Stealthy Hood and then you read Hoopa, I believe it's pretty clear. Yeah. Okay, so I would assume, yeah, I would assume my opponent will try to not attack with Coco Prism this turn. Which makes a lot of sense, right? Definitely makes a lot of sense, but I'm definitely gonna, out of, gonna go out of my way to chase down that Coco Prism. Because I definitely have the time to do so. I definitely have the time to do so. And I'm kind of liking using the other Ogrin instead of the Spiritum, right? Because the Spiritum could be saved for a big hit on something. Um, Ah, uh, the Pigram trying to bypass my Spiritum as well. That makes sense. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and Erika's, right, for five first. I do find the Black Market. That is pretty nice, so I would have liked to find a different stadium. 
Um, this might just outright stop my opponent from being able to tackle. I will keep building on Spite. Yeah. I will counter Stadium. And then I will go ahead and counter Catcher. Counter Stadium, counter Catcher. And retaliate. And then my opponent sends a broken heart. You're definitely playing Wheezing Spread, it's busted. Yeah, I mean, just be careful with the Charizards that play Mail Tank, I guess. We see the Lightning. We see another Picarom. Are we gonna see a Counter Stadium? We are, unfortunately. Oh, I'm honestly not too worried. I don't see how my opponent will be able to deal with the onslaught of Hoopas here. No DC makes me very sad, right? Still no DC makes me very, very sad. No Electro Power is gone. Does mean that, he's, that like, honestly, a Zapdos could be a problem for us. A Zapdos could actually be a big problem here. Um, okay, so... Not too bothered by losing a Guzma here. Just want to check my DC count. There's all three of them there. So I'll grab this and then I'm gonna poke a gear. Uh, sure, I'll grab the Guzma. Okay, so then the question becomes do I just play it safe, attach the energy, and pass? Keeping the two Guzmas. Yeah, I think that's it. Or would I have played it? Yeah. Four DCs in deck, only three. Four DCs total, of course, but I already lost one. To the Coco Prism. Yeah. We see Absol. So my opponent's bench is now full. My opponent's bench is now completely full. There is absolutely nothing he can use to attack my Hoop at this point. So, I mean, as long as I don't make a mistake and bench something that he can KO. There we see the first Guzma. I did discard a Guzma, maybe that was not the best idea. Um, judge, how many Guzmas? That's the first one so far. I will go ahead and attach. I will go ahead and Guzma. Probably the Picarum. I mean, I wouldn't mind starting to take prizes. I also don't want to open up bench space. So I'll just damage the Picarum, right? That works. And then I kind of like using the stadium to just keep thinning. There's the other darkness, and then we'll super cybolt for 80. And barely sure we have our opponent in lockdown here. Yep, just retreats. I top take a DC, that's very nice of my deck, because then I'll be able to draw three prizes here. And then I will definitely Viridian Forest away a Lily, grab another Darkness, and so here's what I'm thinking. Um, I do have a Devoured Field prized, I believe. Right? Yeah, I play three, so I do have a Devoured Field Blight. That Devoured Field prized, I do have a decent chance of finding that. And if my opponent somehow is playing a Sapdos that we haven't seen. I do have the Eevee into Umbrian. Double Nest Ball, Devoured Field for the prizes. I am down to three Guzmas, so I have one Guzma left. We're gonna see the Guzma onto the no energy Hoopa, and that is completely okay by me. <laughs> okay, super lucky top decks, not gonna lie. Super, super lucky top decks here. And we are going to be able to KO the Coco GX for the game. GG, Guigali Nucci, thank you so much for the game. And yeah, Hoop Aubrian going through two lightning based decks. Yeah, pretty strongly, I would say. Pretty, pretty strongly. Um, fairly straightforward games. It's all about matching them, applying the pressure, and then Scoundrel Guard. It's just really, really powerful. Um, so yeah, I invite you guys to try out this deck. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to leave a like, guys. I really do appreciate the support and if you're live with me on twitch don't go anywhere you guys get to choose which deck you want to see do you want to see whimsicott do you want to see a lowland mock <laughs> or 
do you want to see uh, Nakwak, which I don't know why it is not playable in standard. Why is this not playable in standard? There we go. Okay. So let me know in the chat, guys. Whimsicott, Quacknack, or Alolan Mock. I probably, I mean, Alolan Mock tag team. I probably want to save that for last if I can. So Whimsicott or Quacknack, yeah? Either one should work. Let me know in chat and I will be right back. 